Hello, I'm Graham Elwood, and welcome to another episode of The Church of Batman. Um, today, I found we want to talk about the. So, a lot of Senate. Um, uh, Trump's cabinet posts are going through confirmation hearings. Um, some of them being approved, some haven't yet. Um, and I want to talk about Rex Tillerson. So, uh, this article came out in the uh, January 9th issue of USA Today Exxon Mobil and Iran did business under Secretary of State nominee Tillerson. So, um, ExxonMobil, that Rex Tillerson used to be the head of, um, did business with Iran, Syria, and Sudan through a European subsidy, uh, subsidiary while President-elect Donald Trump's nominee for Secretary of State was a top executive of the oil giant, and those countries were under U.S. sanctions as state sponsors of terrorism, um, Securities and Exchange Commission filing show. Um, so this, is, this has come up. Um, the two big things that have come up during Tillerson's uh, hearings last week um, are his dealings with Russia and now this. So this is very telling and this ties into the climate bubble uh, uh, articles that I talked about in uh, past episodes of this. Uh, the sales were conducted 2003, 4, and 5 by Infinium, in which ExxonMobil owned a 50% share according to SEC documents unearthed by American Bridge, a Democratic research group. Um, ExxonMobil told USA Today the transactions were legal because Infinium, a joint venture with Shell Corporation, was based in Europe and the transaction did not involve any U.S. employees. Man, these global corporations, they love skirting around stuff. If there's a loophole, they will find it. Um, the filings from 2006 show the company had $53.2 million in sales to Iran, 600000 in sales to Sudan, and $1.1 million in sales to Syria during those years. All right. Okay. So um, that's not a lot of money, you know, because... ExxonMobil's uh, annual revenue is $371 billion. <laughs> this is the kind of money that they're dealing with. So why is this relevant? Here's why this is relevant. Um, one of the reasons why Trump was so uh, against the Iran deal, and he talked about this in the campaign. Oh, this Obama made this news, these sanctions with Iran, it's a bad deal, blah, blah, blah. It's all about the money and the oil, ladies and gentlemen. That's why he's got ExxonMobil wanting to come into his cabinet, because now, um, if you start to look at everything, his relationship with Russia is about money. And <laughs> maybe they have some fun footage of him and some showers and some Russian prostitutes in a hotel room, but at the very least we know that uh, he owes them $750 million, the Russians, for sure. And as I talked about in the Putin and the climate uh, bubble piece, Russia's two chief exports are oil and weapons. So if Iran is under terrorism, if we, we call them, they're, um, they're sanctions, so they don't have uh, nukes, then those sanctions, the, the oil guys can't get in there. So they either have to get rid of the sanctions or we we do the Bush style and prop up Iran as big bad enemy and we got to go and invade and then we get their oil. So, um, so this is interesting. There's some more stuff in this article that we need to know about. The SEC letter questioned ExxonMobil's failure to disclose the sh two shareholders that it had transactions with three state sponsors of terrorism. Decisions to make such disclosures should be based on the, quote, potential impact of corporate activities upon a company's reputation and share value, and not simply the monetary value of the transactions, the SEC said. But of course, uh, as we said, $300 um, billion in, in revenue. Infinium's European affiliates manage business transactions in those three countries under a policy and procedure consistent with U.S. legal requirement, and no United States person is involved in those business transactions. <laughs> but they're an American company. Isn't this nice? You just sell up, set up stuff other places and get other people to do the stuff. 
These are all legal activities complying with the sanctions at the time, Alan Jeffries, media manager at ExxonMobil, told USA Today. We didn't feel there were material because of the size of the transactions. It's a little couple of million dollar business deal. Um, so, <laughs> this, <laughs> so Senator Bob Menendez of New Jersey, the ranking Democrat of the Foreign Relations Panel, said he was deeply skeptical about Mr. Tillerson's actions of CEO of Exxon that were in direct uh, contravention to express U.S. state policies, but in place to put in place to secure Americans and our country. Um, finding loopholes to make lucrative business deals with geopolitical adversaries while showing no clear regard for U.S. national interests is not a resume builder for a prospective diplomat in chief, Menendez said in a statement to USA Today. This is one of the many issues I look forward to hearing about during the upcoming confirmation hearing. So what's going on is um, Trump is trying to get oil. It's all the climate bubble. That's why there's all these oil people who are also uh, climate change deniers, and that's why they want to get into Iran. So it's funny, like they, it's like almost like he learned from the Bush administration was like, make them out evil, and then we attack them, uh, and then we'll get their oil that way, and we'll also make money from... Uh, Trump is just like, well, let's just, let's just why go through all the, the fuss and muss of, um, of a war, when we can just do business with them, just like, well, as long as the deal's good, so what? Which is so funny to me on a lot of levels, because if Hillary, and as I said, I was not some giant Hillary supporter, but this is the contradiction of the, of the right and conservatives. Had Hillary lost the general election, won the electoral vote, and there was allegations from that the Republican emails were hacked from the Russians and she was potentially had done business deals with Iran through <laughs> Republicans would be going nuts and screaming you know patriotism and we're not safe and we're not safe now of course Hillary um, has sold uh, uranium through her foundation to Russian businessmen it's all very sordid and ugly which is why please um, Again, this is not, this show is not some like, yay, the Democratic Party, we're so great. Um, because uh, Menendez from New Jersey um, has been involved. They have a new governor that was used to be a Gold, Goldman Sachs person. So, <laughs> so currently, um, Lindsey Graham, John McCain, and Marco Rubio are, um, have been open that they they were pretty critical during the confirmations last week of of Tillerson during these hearings and Marco Rubio is in charge of the Senate Foreign Relations Committee and he has a lot of say like if just one Republican defects then it might be hard to to confirm uh, Tillerson uh, now cabinet nominees can still be uh, confirmed by the full Senate even if they don't receive the backing of a committee of the Senate Foreign Relations Committee but the last time that someone was um, not approved by a committee and then the Senate did was in 1944 under FDR. It's the last time that happened. But hey, we didn't have reality TV people becoming president back in 1944. So I just want you guys to pay close attention to what's really going on and what Trump and everyone is going to try to do and even like... The people who are opposing Tillerson, are they opposing Tillerson because they're really they're really concerned with America's safety? Or are they opposing Tillerson because he could make money, more money than them or something, or he's hurting their bottom line? So I want everyone to pay close attention to these confirmation hearings and, and read between the lines. What they're going to try to do, what Trump is going to try to do, is get rid of this deal, uh, the sanctions against Iran that just happened in January of, of a year ago, January 16, that Obama passed. Because the real reason is they want to get at the oil. They want to get at Iran's oil. They're all about the climate. They're all about the oil. That's what they're going to try to do. So what can you do? Well, pay close attention to these Senate confirmation hearings. Um, contact any of your representatives that are involved in these hearings and let them know how you feel about this. And then as I've said, vote with your dollars. When it comes to big oil, do what you can to not use their product. I know it's tough. I've talked about this before. I have a car. 
I have to use it. Um, I try not to use it as often as I can. I try to take public transportation. I'm looking at electric cars, but use their product um, and give your money, vote with your dollar, support um, green energy as best you can. Thanks for liking the show. Press the like, hit the subscribe button. Um, I'm at Graham Elwood on Twitter, at Graham Elwood on Instagram. This has been the Church of Batman. Share it on social media. It's all very easy to do. There's a lot of buttons below to share it on your favorite social media, Facebook, whatever. Thank you so much for watching. Remember, make Gotham great again.